All right, welcome back. Donald Trump may have been the headliner, uh, but he wasn't the only star attraction at CPAC this weekend. Our friends at The Good Liars were there as well. They got the pulse of this mega, mega crowd by asking some participants one simple question. Do you think Donald Trump bears any responsibility for January 6th? No, I think Donald Trump literally said very clearly, be peaceful. But the people were storming the Capitol. No, that did not happen. And that is from the footage of the government themselves. He held the rally on, on January 6th. Yes. He continued to say the election was stolen. It was. His own attorney general t said that it was a free and fair election. There was no widespread it, okay. voter fraud. Maybe his attorney general. Then he said, general be there, be the, wild. Listen, his own attorney general. Then he told general, everyone to walk down to the Capitol. That, to me, is how he's responsible for well, January 6th. Okay, but you're right. picking and choosing. <laughs> Jason, you're picking and choosing. Come on, come on. The good liar is joining us now. Devon Stiefler, Jason Selvig. Um, welcome, to, welcome to you both, guys. Um, didn't either one of you just want to say, or I don't know, maybe you said it and we just didn't use it. Um, Jason, I'll start with you. To that one woman, at first, we, we were there. They definitely stormed. We saw it in person with our own eyes. But, but I feel like even when you do say that, they don't necessarily believe you, even with the facts. Yeah, I, we actually did follow up with that. That we were we were actually there. Uh, we saw this all happen, and I guess we were picking too many facts and choosing too many things to say that actually happened for that guy's liking. Uh, but the more I talk to these people, um, and now it's been two years since January sixth, and they're really just digging in, blaming everyone yeah. but Donald Trump. They blamed Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, the Capitol Police, anybody that doesn't have the name Donald Trump who was the guy that told everybody to be there simply because he couldn't deal with the fact that he was a loser and lost the 2020 election by 7 million votes. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think those two people and I don't think any of the people that have dug in with this conspiracy theory are going to change their mind about January 6th anytime soon. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Devram, the reporting that we're hearing is, right, this was a, obviously a mega, mega crowd, as I said, right, major Trump supporters. We did hear, though, even during the former president's speech um, yesterday evening, there were a couple of, of empty rows. Did you kind of notice or feel any waning support for Donald Trump at all? Uh, yes, is the short answer. Uh, also, we, we talked to a lot of people. I would say the majority of people that we talked to, there were certainly uh, uh, there was certainly a mega MAGA uh, uh, contingent there. But a lot of people said they had hoped Trump would step aside and that DeSantis would be the nominee. We were kind of surprised to, to be hearing that at a CPAC where DeSantis had said he wouldn't be wow. showing up. But between that and just kind of the lack of enthusiasm, like in and around the building, the first thing we remarked on when we walked in was how empty it was. Wow. Um, talk to me, Jason, about this um, couple you spoke to who had it seems um, somewhat of a um, polarizing reaction to Marjorie Taylor Greene's idea of um, national divorce. L let me play it first, and then we'll talk. I don't think we need a national divorce. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, Do you think, I love America. Let's all get together. Do you think, uh, as somebody at CPAC, Marjorie Taylor Greene, she's pretty far right. She said some pretty out there things. How do you feel about her representing the Republican Party? Uh, I'm fine with her representing the Republican Party. Her voters put her in office. Let's yeah, all get together, Jason. <laughs> 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 well, the, the, the funny part about the national divorce to me is that she wants a national divorce, but she is in Georgia that went blue in 2020 and the Senate went blue in 2022. So I don't know in Marjorie's plan where she would fit in in this. Would she represent a different state? Would she stay in Georgia, become a Democrat? So I think like her theories about JFK Jr., 9-11 and QAnon, I don't think she's actually thought this one through. Um, but the silver lining here is there are some moderate Republicans who are there at CPAC and we were able to find some common ground. We both think Marjorie Taylor Greene's ideas are pretty stupid. Um, and I, I always like when we can walk <laughs> away from an event and feel like we've got some common ground with the other side, even if it's just something basic like the United States should be united. So it, that was that was a heartwarming <laughs> moment, I think. And, and, she and didn't then, mention of course, it was a celebrity a big... run of... Go ahead, Devon. 
I'm sorry. She she did say it was a big tent. Um, the party is a big tent, and we saw a guy with a Kanye for president shirt that everyone seemed to think was great. So they really are uh, really welcoming everybody. Then there was the celebrity run-in um, with who knew JFK Jr. <laughs> right or who QAnon um, believes to be um, JFK Jr. L let's let's see him. Are you him? Because a lot of people believe you're JFK Thank Jr. You are you? So are you him? Are you, yes are or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Thank you. Yes or no? Yes or really, no? Really appreciate it. But we did really you, need yes or no. Did JFK Jr. die in a plane crash? I mean, I mean, Devron, the, the the resemblance is completely uncanny, but there's a real momentum behind this guy and the belief in him. It, there, there really is. But thankfully, we had a couple people there, Trump supporters, who said, "Wait a second, wasn't JFK Jr. like six foot one, and and this guy looks nothing like him?" So there was a, a moment where people seemed to have uh, uh, some understanding of the situation, wow. and we did cut that video right before he ruffled Jason's hair. Um, so there was there was a great little moment there between us and JFK Jr. And eventually, I have to say, it was off camera, but we got a yes. He looked at us and he said yes um, in, in answer to that question later when we ran into him. So something to think about. Wow, bre breaking news here. There you <laughs> have it. Yeah, yeah, on the record, confirmation <laughs> on the record. There you have it. Um, to Rom Stiefler, thank you. Jason Selvig, uh, thank you guys um, as well. We appreciate you.